Um, it's a really great honor for me to be here tonight and to talk about fighting leukemia. When I first started with my PhD project, um, I was really optimistic. I was working on the genetic basis of therapy resistance and leukemia. And with my thoughts, I, I was so I was I was thinking we're gonna be able to cure this deadly disease if we just gain more and more information. However, when I progressed with my PhD project, I realized things weren't that easy. During that time, I came across a new feed similar to this one by the DKMS, which is a German registry for stem cell donors, and they were looking for a suitable donor for a patient with leukemia. And since I was working in the field, I was honestly a little bit ashamed because I thought I should have registered earlier. So I thought, I'm probably not going to be able to save the whole world with my PhD project, but maybe there's one patient with leukemia who would benefit from my stem cells. So I signed up. And tonight, I would like to give you a basic information about leukemia and also why stem cell transplantation is for some of these patients the only chance for a cure. Leukemia is cancer of all blood cells. Every hour there's a new diagnosis here just alone in Germany, summing up to about 14,000 new cases, cases each year. Um, compared to other cancers like breast cancer or lung cancer, leukemia are quite rare, making only about 4% of all cancer diagnoses. In children, however, it's the most frequent type of cancer. Um, leukemia, or the word leukemia originates from the Greek language, uh, meaning white blood. The disease was first described in the 19th century, and by then the doctors didn't really know what it was. They only observed that in the blood of leukemia patients, they had this excess of white cells compared to the blood of a healthy individual. They even thought it might be an infection, because by that time they didn't really know much about our blood cells. So in order to understand leukemia, we first have to get an um, overview about how our blood cells are generated. So this is a very simplified illustration of the different blood cells that are existing in our body. They fulfill very important purposes for our daily health. So for example, we have immune cells that fight diseases like bacteria or viruses. And you probably all heard about our red blood cells that are important for transportation of oxygen. Importantly, even though all these cells look different, they have different sizes, different shapes, they fulfill different jobs in our body, they all originate from the same um, blood stem cells. These blood stem cells live in our bone marrow, and they have what we call cell renewal capacity, which means when they start dividing, they will form a new stem cell, but also a progenitor cell that is already a little bit more committed to, to becoming a mature mature blood cell. So the whole maturation process happens in the bone marrow and once the cell is ready, it, it will leave the bone marrow and migrate to the bloodstream. In leukemia, the stem cells or the progenitor cells become abnormal. They start to multiply in the bone marrow and accumulate there. Patients with leukemia don't necessarily die of the cancer cells itself, but these cells are not any longer able to produce the mature cells that we need for our um, health. So this slide summarizes what the doctors back in the 19th century didn't know, that leukemia is a stem cell disorder leading to an accumulation of leukemic blasts. This is the white mass that we saw in the blood sample. And that the patients that suffer from leukemia will like the mature blood cells. So in the next slides, I would like to talk about how leukemia is treated. Just like other cancers, the standard therapy for um, leukemia involves chemotherapy. However, there's one big challenge. So leukemia is a disease that doesn't just happen overnight. It's a long progress. You start, or it starts with healthy stem cells that acquire gene mutations, as indicated here by these dots. Gene mutations are, the cause, they are caused by um, damages to our DNA, for example, by toxic chemicals or by radiation. So over the years, the stem cells will acquire more and more of these gene mutations and eventually when the patient is diagnosed with a full-blown leukemia, we have a genetically diverse disease. When the patient is now treated with chemotherapy, this may lead to resistance of some of these cells because they have acquired gene mutations that make them less sensitive to the chemotherapy. If a patient 
overall response to the treatment, he's in a state called, that we call remission. So the healthy stem cell take over again. But unfortunately, as you can see here, in many times, residual leukemia cells are still present in the patient. And over time, these cells start growing again, and the patient is in a and the patient um, suffers from a relapse, which is the re reoccurrence of the disease. And unfortunately, at this point, the patients frequently don't respond to the chemotherapy any longer. And most patients who suffer from a relapse will eventually die. So applying chemotherapy to a patient is always a matter of balance. On the one side, you want to be as harsh as possible to kill the leukemia cells. However, if you're too toxic, you will also affect the healthy remaining stem cells that are left. So doctors came up with a different approach. And this is illustrated here in this slide. In, key, in the setting of a stem cell transplantation, the patient will receive a really harsh chemotherapy treatment. And usually this is combined with radiation. The goal of this really harsh treatment is, as indicated here by this cross, to really get rid of as many um, cells in the bone marrow as possible. And after this harsh treatment, the patient receives donor stem cells from a healthy individual. Over time, these stem cells will repopulate the bone marrow and start to regenerate all the mature blood cells that we have talked about before. There's one big problem with this approach. You've probably heard about immune reactions when a patient received a, receives a kidney or a, a lung transplant. In the setting of a stem cell transplantation, we are actually transplanting the immune system of a donor into the leukemia patient. So the immune cells will realize they're in a foreign environment and actually start to attack the, um, patient of the, body, um, the body of the patient. So when we choose a donor for a leukemia patient, we have to make sure that this immune reaction is very little. But how can we predict that? The immune cells will recognize a foreign cell by the cell surface markers. So if the cell surface markers of the donor and the recipient are pretty similar, the immune reaction will be little. And the type and the shape of these cell surface markers are encoded in our DNA. So when we're choosing a right donor, we have to perform genetic analysis. We are characterizing what is so-called the HLA type. Therefore, we look at five different genetic markers. For each of these markers, we have two versions, one that we got from our mother and the other one that we got from our father. But unfortunately, due to our genetic variety, there are not just two versions of these genes. In the whole human population, we have hundreds of um, different versions of these genetic markers. So just looking at these five genetic markers, we have 10,000 of possible combinations. That makes us unique, however, it also makes it also hard find a donor that is genetically um, similar to us or to the leukemia um, patient. So the search for a suitable donor usually starts within the family because family members are genetically similar. A perfect match would mean that the two versions for all of the five markers that we're looking at are identical. Our mother or our father will never be a perfect match because we get 50% of the genetic information from each of them. But then when we look at siblings, since they usually share the same genetic pool, there's a 25% chance for every of our brothers or sister to be a perfect match. So the more siblings you have, the greater are the chances to find a suitable donor. So that's the reason why you should always be nice to your siblings, right? Because eventually they can save your life. When you look at other family members, such as cousins, um, the chances are very little actually to find a perfect match. Overall, only about 20 30% of leukemia patients will find a matching donor within the family. So the majority of them depends on an unrelated donor. But how can we find that? Especially when you think of the genetic variety, it's really like searching for a needle in a haystack. So national and international registries have been set up to facilitate the um, search to find a suitable donor, and that's what I will be talking about in the next couple of slides. The DKMS is one of the German registry for stem cell donors. Um, it was founded in the 90s, and so far they have collected or they have registered about 10, 9 million people. Still, about 10% of leukemia patients won't find a matching donor. So, if you're really 
beginning to, um, to make you help a, a, a leukemia patient, I would like to show you now how you can sign up at the DKMS. First of all, it's very easy and for free. All you have to do is you go online, you check if you qualify, and you provide your contact information. A couple of days later, you will receive a barcode swap. Basically, it looks like a Q-tip, and you rub that in the inside of your mouth. That collects enough cells, and you will send them back to the laboratory. They will perform genetic analyses and determine your HLA type. This information is stored anonymously in a global patient search. So you could not only save someone here in Germany, but basically all over the world. In case you are a match for someone in their database, which actually only happens in 5% of the cases, the DKMS will get back in touch with you and check if you're still willing and also physically able to become a donor. And then there are basically two ways of how the stem cells are collected. In the majority of the cases, a so-called purple stem cell collection is performed. The stem cells that are living in our bone marrow are triggered by a chemical to move outside into the purple bloodstream. And then from there on, as shown here in this picture, there's a machine who can basically filter out the stem cells from your blood. This whole procedure takes about three to five hours, and you see this guy is smiling, it doesn't really hurt. <laughs> and you can know Alma afterwards. Um, in about 20% of the cases, a bone marrow collection has to be performed. Some people think you have to get the bone marrow from the spine, but it's actually the pelvic bone which is close to your hips. It's done under full anesthesia, and the doctors will take it needle to collect about 5% of your total bone marrow. So after a couple of weeks, your body has recovered the stem cells that you have lost. Um, the DKMS actually did a survey and asked past donors if they would do it again. And actually, 95% of them said if they had a chance to donate again for a patient, they would do it. So that just shows that the procedure itself really is not as, um, as hard as some of might think. So and finally we have the stem cells. Here this is a infusion of or this is a bone marrow sample. And this is really transfused to the patient by the blood veins. And then the stem cells just know to go back into the bone marrow and from there on they start to repopulate all the um, blood cells. The whole process takes about 10 days and then the patient usually um, is feeling well, they better. Overall, um, the stem cell transplantation increases the survival chance of a patient by 20 to 30 percent, which may not seem much, but for leukemia patients who have a really high risk disease and great chances to have a relapse and eventually die of their disease, this is really the only chance they have to survive. So, to wrap it up, I hope I was able to give you an overview about our blood cells and how they are important for our well-being, such as they help us to fight and virus, and they transport the oxygen throughout the whole body. Um, leukemia is a cancer of our blood stem cells, and for some leukemia patients, the only chance to survive this deadly disease is a stem cell transplantation. I would like to point out again that the registration process to become a stem cell donor is very easy, it probably takes longer to order a pizza online, and the procedure itself is not very harsh. So I hope I was able to encourage you to go online. There's even an English version of this website, so you have no excuse if you don't speak German. And register and yeah. Actually, so statistically speaking, we have about seven to eight people in this audience who might be a match for a leukemia patient. I think this is a thrilling idea that someone here is saying could be saving someone. So yeah, thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to take your questions. We always give you the chance after each talk to ask your questions, which is also a great thing about this event. So speakers don't run away, they stay here, they answer your questions and they also stay for the break. So if you have even more, you can still talk to them afterwards. So is there anyone who wants to ask anything? Uh, we have volunteers running around with microphones, so I think there are uh, people in the back having questions. So. The microphone will come to you. You have to okay. go and uh, catch it. Question, but, um, if you have an identical spirit, how are you so as a user of the donor? I didn't hear your question, I'm sorry. Uh, if you have an identical spirit, how are you so as a user of the donor? So 
So I, I will just repeat the question for the video recording. The question was, if you have an identical twin, how big is the chance? So if it's really an identical twin, so who looks the same like you, you have the same genes because you started from the very same egg, you know, that split during the process. So an identical twin would be, from looking at immune reaction, be a perfect donor because you could just transplant any organ and the immune cells would never recognize they're in a foreign person because the genes are the same. But there's one problem. What I didn't talk about is the immune system of the donor will actually also help to fight the residual leukemia cells that are in the patient. So when you transplant the, um, the bone marrow from an identical twin, this effect is lost and, um, if you, um, and the chances actually for a relapse are higher because the residual leukemia cells don't get killed by the donor cells. That makes sense. Thank you. Would you mind to uh, throw the cube to the yeah, to get a question? Thank you. My question is about the peripheral stem cell collection. Mm -hmm. Because I'm aware that first you have to take certain drugs which increase the amount of stem cells in your bone marrow. So what about the side effects? Because it might, you know, decrease the amplification of those cells might cause or well, increase the risk of mutations and other side effects perhaps. So a few weeks of this drug treatment and then you can donate your stem cells. What about it? So the question. <laughs> so the side effects of the purple stem cell collection, right? So you're right. We're giving chemicals that will trigger your stem cells to move from the bone marrow to the bloodstream, and this has only been done for like a couple of ten years. So the long-term side effects are still unclear. But I think um, so far there's no data showing that there's really a, a long-term negative. Um, donors usually feel some pain, that's probably because the cells are leaving like, their environment, but um, I'm not aware that there's really, like, a, neck, a really bad side effect of the donation. Um, my question is, do we know why leukemia is rare in adults, but very common in children? Yeah, so I repeat the question, why leukemia is rare and, and more common in children? I think it just has to do with the genetic basis of the disease. So it's a long, usually it's a long process to get a leukemia. And that's why, um, or cancer in general, if you think of um, also skin cancer or other cancers, they just happen over, over years. And then there are some other cancers, and for example also leukemia in children, that are already starting at a very early age. Um, sometimes we can even trace back leukemia cells already at the blood of the newborn baby, and then the leukemia cell happens a couple of years later. So it might just be by chance um, that it, actually these um, diseases happen at early and then other cancers just take longer in their development. Thank you very much for your answer. Thank you for your questions. And no more questions.